I think that's our signal. Awesome. All right. Well, my name is Lori Gray. I'm with the Kansas Historical Society, but I'm going to wait to be introduced. Oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you today, Gray, who we just met, and she's going to tell you what I'm going to do. Thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. So I went to State Archives over at the Kansas Historical Society, and I hope you'll forgive me for sitting down. Normally, I would stand. I'm getting over a cold. I don't have a lot of oxygen, and I'd like to use that to project my voice. So hopefully everybody can hear me okay. And if you need me to stand, just let me know. But like I said, I'm here today to talk about genealogy resources at the Kansas State Archives. Has anyone been out to our facility and been into the archives? Old hat, okay. There are some other great presentations. You're welcome to go listen to them. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, the resource has been there for many years. Mm -hmm. many years. And is that out by the library? Right, it is. So, we, well, the state, so the state library and the state archives are separate institutions. <laughs> I'm with the Historical Society, which runs, most people are familiar with the Kansas Museum of History, the one that's being remodeled right now to reopen in 2024. The state archives is a division of the Kansas Historical Society, which is also overseeing the museum. So we are the same entity, but we operate somewhat separately. So I wanted to talk about our resources today, both online and in person. This is a very rudimentary introduction to the resources that we do offer for genealogy research and local history research. So if you are familiar with us, you have probably encountered a lot of this before, but that's okay. And I plan to talk for give or take 20 to 30 minutes. I want to leave a lot of time for questions. I'm the head of reference at the Kansas Historical Society, so I want to be a resource for you on your genealogy journey. So please don't be afraid to ask questions. I'm more than happy to stop and answer a question right on the spot. Don't worry about interrupting the program. This is a, let's treat this very informally. I want us to have a nice discussion about our genealogy resources at the Historical Society. So, like I said, there's our Kansas Historical Society. We are on the west edge of Topeka, 64, 6425 Southwest 6th Avenue, right off of Wanamaker. So you can't miss us on the west edge of town. On the left-hand side, there is our research room. We are currently open to the public while the museum is closed. So never fear, your favorite resources are still available. And that's our building on the right-hand side. I just think it's a lovely shot. We have a wonderful facility out there. It's about 88 acres with walking trails, the museum, and our offices. So this, if you're not researching, you can still come on down and, and walk around and see the old schoolhouse and see some of the improvements we're making to the outside of our facility while we are under renovation. Please don't feel shy to stop by. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the Kansas State Archives. We were founded in 1875 by the Kansas Newspaper and Editors Association, who recognized the importance of the history of the state, especially in the founding or in the, in the running up to the Civil War and our role in bleeding Kansas. So as newspapermen, they wanted to preserve what they saw was one of the most important parts of the state history, and that was the collection of newspapers. So we started out uh, on a bookshelf of the state auditor's office in the Capitol, and we have grown now to the facility you saw on the screen just before, uh, over seven miles of published material, over 50,000 reels of microfilm, over 500,000 photographs, and much, much more. So we have been very busy in our, uh, let's see, almost 150 years. So. We uh, became a trustee, an official trustee of the state's history in 1879, which means we collect non-current government records. And we also collect local history material, uh, including county records and uh, books about Kansas history. So when you're talking about Kansas genealogy resource, the State Archives really is your oyster. You can dive pretty deep into what we have and basically have the grape shot approach. So this is our one of our founding librarians, Zoo Adams, there on the left. She was uh, one of the only librarians to work at our founding. And now a few years later, we have a small but mighty staff of librarians and archivists. So when we're talking about genealogy, we want to talk about you know, who we are. Who am I? Who am I exactly? 
And it's the question we're all trying to answer when we do genealogy resource research. And when we're trying to find out the answer of who you are or who I am, we're really asking ourselves what our purpose is and why we're here. So where did we come from is really the quintessential question to ask in order to know where you're going to go. And genealogy, as I say on the screen, helps us tell our own story. And as everyone knows who does genealogy research, it really is about the journey. You know, there's no, there's no end point to this. So when you're researching in the state archives, and I should clarify what an archive is, it's a place where people can go to, to gather firsthand facts, data, and evidence from letters, reports, notes, memos, photographs, and other primary sources. When you're researching in those materials, we're trying to answer the question of who I am. We have in this presentation online resources at the Kansas State Archives, in person resources, a little bit of information about how to research, uh, research your house history, a little local history, some resources about that, and how to apply your history and tips and tricks. Now, I am not really a genealogist. I work with genealogy as part of my job, and I've done a little bit of family genealogy. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to say I'm a bit of an amateur and I'm still learning about the process. I'm sure everyone in here probably knows more about genealogy research than I do, but I am a great resource for figuring out what we have in our seven miles worth of collection. So I'm happy to be your guide on this journey. Our online genealogy resources are multitude. We have limited, well, I should say, free and limited access to Ancestry.com and Newspapers.com through our website. And at the end of the program, I can walk you through our website if anyone has any questions. I know it can be a bit of a quagmire. Uh, so we partnered with Ancestry.com and Newspapers.com as their subsidiary to uh, have a lot of our material, uh, including county records, census records, newspapers, available online for free to Kansas residents. So if you ever need to look at any material, I'll go in a little bit deeper in a few slides of what we have. But if you ever need to access these resources for Kansas material, you can do it for free through our website. All you'll need is a Kansas driver's license. Yes, sir. Yeah. How deep of a collection does Ancestry go into? Does it strictly U.S. or does it include Europe? So for the items that we offer for free access, it is going to be items from our collection. So it is Kansas oriented. And I can show you in just a second, uh, I have a list of items. Um, I understand. Uh, ancestry. Yeah, so so yeah, Ancestry has, you know, the broader, mm -hmm. the broader picture, but what we access free comes from our collection as part of our partnership with them. Okay. Um, they made the material available and made it available. And newspapers.com is the same thing. We also, I'm going to talk to you about our archive catalog, and that is going to be for non-published material like maps, government records, um, architectural prints. You, know, you never know what you're going to find when you're doing genealogy research, and other things that are not published as part of our library collection. And I'm also going to talk about Kansas Memory, which is our online digital repository, and it's a wonderful resource if you're looking for photographs, diaries, letters. We've put over 700,000 images online and it's all free to access. Candace Memory is a wonderful research tool because we all know we can't always get to the places that we want to be to research, but you can use this right from your home. So Ancestry.com. Like I said, limited free access. You see on the right hand side, this is the screen that you will see if you are logging in through our website. All you'll need to do is provide your driver's license information from Kansas. Like I said, if you do not have a Kansas driver's license, you can come to our facility and we offer free access through our computers on site in the research room. So what you'll find on Ancestry.com is we're hoping to add more. So always kind of check back with us. This is an ongoing project. Kansas Census and voter list. The Kansas Census started in 1855 when it was still a territory and went to 1925. And that includes agricultural census records, statistical rules, and other things that can tell us about the, the history of the people who live there. The agricultural census records are really interesting. Some of them can include how many trees were on a family farm, for instance, how many, uh, what kinds of trees did they have, orchards, how many orchards did they have? So when we're talking about genealogy, we're not just talking about 
who married whom and how many kids did they have. We're talking about the lives of the fugitives and understanding the experiences of the people who came before. So those census records can be really, really helpful in knowing those stories. We have Kansas birth and marriage and death records. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about those later, but we do have, uh, if any of you have done research in Kansas before, you know that the state mandated that vital records be kept after 1911, 1913. So you would have to go to the Kansas Office of Vital Statistics. Well, that's pretty late. That was only about 100 years ago. So what do you do when you need to access records before that? You come to us and we have probably 90% of the records that counties kept and we can help you access those. Some of them are available on Ancestry and for those that aren't, they're available in our research room. Let's put a pin in that. I will have a different slide later for those because I know they're very important. How many, how many years back? It depends on the county. They can go back to 1865. Maybe I've seen some that are a little bit earlier. So really depends on the county. And like I said, I can go deeper into the website and show that in a bit. Kansas military records. Uh, we have, uh, hopefully coming up, and I don't want to speak too soon, so don't hold this, don't hold me to this, but we're hoping to get bounty claim records online for World War One. It's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bounty claim records were basically uh, uh, paperwork that was put in to get funding from uh, from for soldiers who had participated in World War One. So the bounty claim records can include anything from descriptions of the people, if they had had any medical issues while they were in the service or uh, had uh, come into it with a medical issue. It can have information about where they served. It can have notes from office or who they serve people they served with. It can have discharge papers. It can have um, uh, descriptions of their like their service or if they, if they died in, in the service. So it's a really wonderful resource. They're not online yet. We are, we're really getting to get those available. If they are, and since they're not online, you can't access those in our research room now. So if you think your ancestors served from Kansas in World War I, bounty records are a wonderful resource for you for genealogy. It also lists uh, where they came from, their hometown, that kind of thing. So it can really give you a lot of details to contextualize their life at that period. Uh, Kansas immigration and immigration records. Uh, those are, again, uh, part of our county records uh, that I'm going to talk about in a bit. But very interesting learning about um, naturalization. If someone came from somewhere else, you want to know the dates for that and where they came from. It can help you narrow that down. Court, Kansas court, land, wills, and financial records, dictionaries, encyclopedias, and references. I don't need to tell you all of these, but this is an excellent resource for getting the nitty gritty paperwork of your genealogy tree and kind of cementing those connections. And like I said, free for Kansas residents is a tremendous resource. Any questions about ancestry? I know I'm going through things very quickly. I want to make sure we have time for questions, and I'm going to delve a little bit deeper in a bit. One question. Yeah. So if a person um, lived in one state and moved to Kansas, <clears throat> then they, what you would have is only what's applicable to what happened to them while they were in Kansas. So we only have official Kansas records like um, birth, marriage, death. Um, there may be some material in the collection that would mention them if they if someone never donated papers and they were associated with it. Uh, it might be a matter of just running their name through our databases and seeing what comes up. Um, it's easier to put other government records if they did something in Kansas that involved they got married, they had a kid, and they registered it. They uh, got divorced, that's a good one. They died. There's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of paperwork that comes along with death. Uh, probate records, wills, those kind of things. So those, a lot of those things you can find in our county records. The most important thing when looking for county records is knowing that they know not place. You want to know when it happened and you want to know where it happened and then you can narrow down your search from there. I hope that in part of your yes. I'm using the US Census. I'm sure everybody's heard a lot about the census records lately since 1950 came out. I won't spend too much time on this slide. We do have, like I said, all through Ancestry, all the Kansas census records from 1855 to 1925. 
and through ancestry and, and many other resources on the web since the chapter up to 1950. We know that census records provides us with a listing of the people in the household. We know the family name. We know usually where they live, uh, what in some cases their occupation was. Obviously, with census records, um, the information can change from decade to decade. We do have a wonderful page on our website, and I'll show you later, of uh, what exactly each census, what information each census contains. So it's a wonderful resource to kind of know what you're looking for. So obviously, it's uh, the census has become a. It, it started out as a big, very straightforward resource, you know, counting the people or the cows or the trees in your domain, and it's unfortunately become a very complicated legal document. Um, but we can learn. We can learn quite a bit from it. Um, anybody know off chance when they took the first census in America? Seventeen ninety. Right. And how many questions did the first census ask? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> six. 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 That's a lot shorter than today. <laughs> so, as we compile information from the census, and this is from the 1920 census, you get a sense of where your people are living and what they're doing and what their occupations are, who is in their household. We know that anyone who's in the household living at the time is going to be counted. So, if they're lodging, if they have borders, Again, contextualizes their experience and also gives you different avenues to go off of. If you know there, if there's someone that you don't think should be in your family, but they're listed in the census, they may have been a friend, they may have been, you know, a distant relative. That just gives you one more person to start looking for. So try to be expansive in your scope. There's another uh, close-up example of the 1940 uh, household data names relations. We've got. Birger Bosen, he was a Swedish immigrant. We know his wife was there. Um, they didn't have any children. That's the complete entry. We know where they were living at the time. They were in Lindsborg. He's a Swede. Big surprise. Um, in McPherson County. And we have the details. So, so just from there, I mean, we already have two or three different avenues. The place, the date, the names, the family. All of that could be a different avenue for research if you're stuck or you need to, a little bit more information. So vital records, I keep talking about these a lot. Vital records are the records about ourselves, birth, marriage, death, other, other fun things. Uh, this is another screenshot from our website. It, it gives you just information about what vital records are, where to find them. Again, anything after 1911, go to the Vital Statistics Office, generally. Not always the case, but generally. And what can we learn? We can learn an awful lot. We can learn birthdates, places, ages. What's really nice, if someone married very young in Kansas, they had to have a relative sign a family or father figure father sign for them. So you can learn family names that way. Our vital records are stored on microfilm. So they are a little bit tricky to access sometimes, but we do have from, oh, we do have vital records or county records, I should say, from almost every county. Anybody know how many counties there are in Kansas? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. All right, yeah. So we have almost all the information from these counties. It was really up to the counties how much they were going to give to us um, before it was mandated that these be kept by the state. So unfortunately, some have been lost. Some are also still kept by the county. So if you do not see what you need in our records, always go back to the county, the district court clerk, county clerk, sorry, county clerk. Or the city clerk of the city that you're interested in, and they may still have those records. Yes. So, so you have images of the records? We do. So the records themselves aren't online, but we do have indexes. And maybe I put a screenshot. I do not. I don't know how to go back. I'll show you at the end of our county page, and then I'll show you what they look like. Do you have the images of the newspaper articles also? Yes, and I'm going to show you the newspapers in just a second. So yes, for the county records, they are available on microfilm, like I said, in our research room. Another exciting thing that not many people know about right now is that our ILL program is starting back up. We have been on hold for the last two years because we've lost our staff member who handles that. And ILL is interlibrary loan. You can loan out our microfilm. So if you're in Kansas, all you have to do is contact your local library, tell them what you need from us, and they can request it, and we can send it to you to use at your library. So you don't need to come to our facility if you're not local which is unfortunate for us because we'd love to see you, but we just want to make sure that we get that information. 
So we also have some wonderful new readers that we've collected over the last two or three years to view microphone. You guys remember the old hand crank ones? Ours are beautiful, they're wonderful. I think the public library has some now. The digital ones you can see on the screen. You can make them clear and bright and beautiful and please come out and see our readers and stuff. Okay, vital records and county records. Another example here is a marriage certificate. I think it's actually from 1921. Um, like I said, the bulk of our vitals are from pre-1911. It includes district court records, cemetery deed records, probate records. It's very important if you're getting into who did what or who what went where. Probate records are very important for that. You can learn how old people were. Uh, you can learn who their families were, where they got married. If you're <laughs> if you're experienced in genealogy, I'm sure this is all probably old hat for you, but it's a good refresher on the items that we have. <laughs> ah, okay, here's our county records page. So to access county records, you go to kshs.org. You're going to hover your mouse. Sorry, people who are watching on Zoom. We're going to hover your mouse here on research. Don't click on it. You're going to get a drop down menu. You're going to click on county records. And this is the page that's going to come up. And what you can do, the mouse going to be on the screen. You pick the county for the records you want to access. If you knew that they lived in Clark, Clay, Coffee, you would click on that county and you'll get a full list of all the microphone or all the county records that we have for that particular county. Like I said, available on microphone 99% of the time. And again, some are available on Ancestry as well. And it can really vary um, depending on the county, what we have, like you saw in the previous slide. The bulk of it's going to be birth, marriage, death, but you'll also find just a host of other resources. If you click on Shiny County, for example, you can get everything from a register of men in Topeka in like 1925. For some reason, they counted all the men in Topeka in that year. Uh, to dog registrations, like registering your dog, um, and any anything else you can think of. Shawnee County, if you have ancestors here, you're pretty lucky you're probably going to find them in those county records somewhere. What, what about divorce? Yes, divorce. Sorry, I, should have, I shouldn't have left that out. Divorce, birth, marriage, and death. Yes, lots of divorce records as well. So anyone need me to leave that up longer to get the... Like I said, our website is a little bit of a maze. That's why I wanted to include this. KSHS research. All right. Newspapers and newspapers.com. Like I said, newspapers.com is a subsidiary to ancestry.com. And we have made all of our pre-1923 newspapers available online through newspapers.com, which is free to access for Kansas residents. So you'll go through our website again, kshs.org. Go to that research tab, hover your mouse, and then click on newspapers. Follow the path for our digital newspapers program. And you'll put in your license. It takes you to newspapers.com. And you can access all of the papers that we put up, which is pretty much, well, everything from our collections before 1923. The reason we stopped at 1923 is because at the time that we did this project, that was the copyright cutoff. And we didn't have the resources to approach every publisher, even if they <laughs> existed, to ask if we could put those items up. But since time has not passed, we're going to be putting more of us. So look in the future going forward on newspapers.com, and we're going to start expanding those day ranges. So like it says on the screen here, we have over 9 million news pages available. Remember, we were founded by the Newspapers and Publishers Association. So newspapers were really their jam. It's our bread and butter. That's what they started collecting. We have some of the earliest newspapers published in the state from 1855. And then all the way up to the present day in 2022, okay. we have been collecting newspapers. It's still an ongoing collection. It's not static by any means. So you can find uh, anything from the smallest papers in one small town that may not exist anymore to papers that we have uh, that we're doing all over the place. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> so, so death records yeah. are obituaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, what did they used to call them? It, I need to get back in. I need to find articles about you know, what they wrote about deaths mm -hmm. in the family because that's where I pick up names of other people. And, and, and so, how did I do that? So, yeah, if you wanted to do um, a search on newspapers.com, you could do it just by keyword. 
and you can type it into the bar, search the KSHS collections, and type in the person's name. That's going to pull up a lot of results. So what I recommend doing is narrowing it down by the paper and the approximate year and date. Hopefully, um, that will make your search a lot easier. And then just going into the paper, most early papers are pretty short at that period. And unfortunately, they're organized for the most part, but you'll just have to go through the pages and you can, they're OCR, so you can search by name. So if you get into page one of the St. Mary's Star from 1923, and you search for Johnson, anywhere on the page that Johnson occurs, you're going to find the article for that word. It's usually just going to be a small, you know, Walter Johnson died this day, his funeral services were held. The later papers, we tend to have more obituaries because the practice of putting in obituaries, you know, changes things do. So you'll get more information. For the death records themselves, that would be a matter if you want to find an official declaration of death, uh, if you're doing like a DAR application or something, you would need to do DAR. But uh, you would do, um, go to the county in question, see if, if they died in Shawnee County. You would go to Shawnee County, uh, birth, marriage, deaths, you would probably just say death records, then you would click on that, find the microphone number that corresponds to the date that you know that they died, what year, and then you would go through the records, our microphone, and you would find that record. Hopefully, it's a lot of and someone. And, and the newspapers, that's completed through what, what year? Uh, up to 1923. So I think it stops in 1922 in December, I believe. So, so realistically, we can't go to your website and look obits. So for anyone who died prior to that cutoff date, 1923, and we have the paper available online, you would just have to search for it with the newspapers.com. And if it's after 1923, you would need to go to the newspapers that are available on microphone, and those are available in our research room, or we can loan them out, I see. and you would have to go to that paper. And is that a lot more difficult? No, if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> uh, if you know the, the date, we always recommend having a good date. Don't just say, I think they died in the 1890s. You'll be looking forever. Uh, if you could say, yes, December 23rd, 1890, then you would go, you know, December 24th, and go about a week early and have that one. Don't read another name of the paper. If you know the location where they died, my suggestions would be to <laughs> look first to see if the town that they died in had uh, a paper. And if we don't have a paper from that town or they never published one, then go to the county seat. A lot of the times, since we're a very rural state, the county seat was the one that had the big papers they would publish. I also suggest when people are doing genealogy research in newspapers, if they did come from somewhere else, like Tennessee or Kentucky, go back to the town that they came from. Because a lot of the times they're still going to have family there and there were, you know, this people who survived them would put a paper article in that place for an obituary. Yes, ma'am. Some local genealogy societies also make indexes for the newspaper deaths or marriages. Like I know they do for Emporia mm -hmm. area. So if you could find an index for that paper, sometimes it's a lot easier. It's alphabetically arranged. So so how do we get a list of where all the genealogical societies are? <laughs> well, I would go close to where that person died. Okay. And then just Google it. Google it. Google, Google, Google. Google it. <laughs> the goals are really good resource. Lauren, I got another question for you. Yeah. Um, see if I can phrase this correctly. I have a, a subscription to newspaper.com. Mm -hmm. And I knew that you could go in through your website and basically access newspaper records. Is the data set on newspapers.com and the data set that I would access through your website identical? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. Um, our promotional paper, our promotion through newspapers.com is to provide that free access to Kansas residents, but it's also what newspapers.com gets out of it is that they have access to all of our collections. Or with the, with a search on newspapers.com, you're going to be generally broader unless you specify it in Kansas. If I do that same search on your website, will it only look at Kansas newspapers? Theoretically, yes. So, newspapers.com, I don't, I'm not denigrating them when I say it, but it can be a little tricky to search. I'm just saying that it may actually narrow your search somewhat and could make your search more successful if you go through your website. Yeah. I and and that honestly, that's been my experience. Yeah. Exactly. Just maybe yeah. I get more uh, Did I understand that you said anything prior to 1923, all newspapers were online? All newspapers from the Kansas State Archives, which is, or Kansas newspapers from the Kansas State Archives. 
So like we've collected quite a bit. We don't have 100% of what was published. It would just be impossible. Uh, but we do have a, a very large collection of pre right. so That's what we're kind of finding out, you know, we're just trying to find, you know, um, a 1918 newspaper in Greenwood County. And um, on newspaper.com, we couldn't find it. But then if you go here, and I think if here, if you put your date or something in it, it'll bring up all the newspapers during that period. Mm -hmm. But then there'll be an asterisk beside the ones that are online and the ones that don't have it. Are not online, is that my understanding? 90% of the time, if it's online and they all should be before 1923, right underneath it, you'll see newspapers.com and you would click on that. And I believe that link will take you through to sign in with the license. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to access that paper through that link. And yeah, we're good, we're on the right page. So you'll see, I'm not sure if you're sitting far away, you can see it. There's a few different ways to research in our newspaper database. You could either put in the city of publication like Topeka, or you can put in a word in the the paper, not the article, just the paper, like you do Kansas City Star. Uh, you, you can narrow it by county, the state, the date range as well. If you know you're just looking for a county, just put in um, so Greenwood. Greenwood and then your date range and then click search and then you'll see all the papers that were published in Greenwood between those dates. And then if they are on newspapers.com, you should have a link to that. But some of them are not there yet. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Post 1923, uh, it's still a process because of copyright. We have to work beginning our program again to get those uh, microphones scanned in and put online. But now, if you can find where you think the county would maybe not have sent you the newspapers, or are we gathering all of them prior to 1923 to count? We gathered um, our, our gathering protocols that are complex. Um, but basically what we've done is reached out to the separate publishers. A lot of publishers know that we collect, so they send to us. What they did in before 1923 to collect papers, I, I don't know exactly, but I assume it was very similar to what we do today. We go out and hunt for them, and we get into relationships with people, with publishers yeah. who know that we're doing this active archiving. Uh, did the county send things to us? Probably not the counties for the papers. Um, it would have probably come from the publishers. I could be mistaken though, because newspapers, uh, I don't deal with the acquisition part of it. Um, but in general, we try to be very all inclusive in what we do collect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Full access to newspapers on microfilm in our research room. So if you don't want to deal with newspapers.com, if you would rather look at microfilm or if it's past 1923, those newspapers are available on microfilm in our research room. Okay. And what do newspapers tell us? Old hat for genealogy folks. Newspapers will tell us where did they go? Where did they come from? What are they doing? Um, who's dying? Who's marrying? Who's visiting whom? It's a plethora of useful information. Uh, so for instance, the example I provided, we know that our subject, Beard Bosong, did uh, work in Canada, congregational work. I assume that's part of a church organization. So if we could find more information about that, we could track down the church record. Uh, he left Saturday, he was uh, going to Norton, he spent time in Lindsberg. You could look at papers from Norton, you could look at papers from Lindsberg. You could track this gentleman's movements throughout his, uh, throughout his life, just using this newspaper, for example. Um, and like I say on there, it is the delicate art of interpretation. Sometimes newspapers are maybe correct, maybe not correct. We hope they're correct. Uh, so we have to back up those uh, sources that we do find with additional information. If it says he lived in Lindsberg, let's find some information about his life in Lindsberg. Let's uh, let's find a census record that says he's in Lindsberg. Let's find, uh, you know, house ownership, a deed, you know, something like that. So as we know, lives aren't static. People moved around for opportunities. The gentleman I'm following here in these papers definitely moved quite a bit. We're following the paper trail. This is, uh, for instance, um, and I don't know exactly where this document come from, comes from. It might be one of ours, or it might be from Ancestry, but this is a passenger list uh, when he came to the United States on one of his many journeys. That was online? I mean, in a newspaper? Uh, no, this was just online. This was, I think, on maybe on Ancestry. I can't remember exactly what the image came from. I'm sorry. But uh, it's just an example that when we're looking at genealogy resources, we don't these All right. And we are getting on. We have maybe 10 more minutes. So I'm just going to keep flying through these. Please interrupt me if you have questions. And our archives catalog is available on our website. Some items are available online when you go into it. 
some items are not. You can also narrow it down by material type. So if you're looking for a photograph of a person, if you're looking for um, a map of a county or a, a place, you can go to our catalog, do a keyword search, narrow it down by material type, and you can search. So this is for our unpublished collection. So you can, and I'll have, uh, again, that's kshs.org, hover over research, bottom right archives catalog. And that will be for our unpublished collection. So one of the many ways you can search for material. Kansas Memory, like I said, is our online digital repository. That's kansasmemory.org. Again, keyword searchable. You can find our blog as well, which is a really exciting look at different topics in Kansas history. Right now, I think we have a blog post up about um, uh, political electioneering uh, campaign advertisements. Some of the really cool things you can find on here are photographs from different towns and places. Uh, we've had people as far away as Sweden find their relatives on Kansas memory and uh, in the photographs because they've been identified. So it's a really great tool for diving into these community experiences and seeing who is where and also getting an understanding of what your ancestors may have seen when they walked around a town uh, at a particular date or the sites that they would have encountered. Uh, really, it's it's about the documents, right? But it's also about understanding their lives. And that's what Kansas Memory helps us do. Totally free resource. Yeah. Are you still accepting uh, for donation or for digital copying images of Kansas that people might find among their family archives? Sometimes. Um, yes, we are always actively looking for donations. Um, we like to prioritize things that tell stories that are um, identified. You know, if you find 50 photos in a box that you don't know what they are, that's a little bit more difficult for us because we want to integrate them in, into our collection in a meaningful way so that people can use them for research. Um, so we, since we are a research institution as well, we have to kind of do the balance of what we collect for posterity versus what we collect for research. Um, but Kansas Memory has a lot of awesome features, including our book bag, which means you can create an account for free, add all the images that you found, organize it by topic, you can share it with other people, like if you get your family members on board on Kansas Memory, and do look for an update coming to this website soon. We are in the process of updating it, so all the material should still be up there, but it'll have a beautiful new look. I don't know when it's coming, but eventually we will have a new Kansas Memory. And you can also search by, a lot of people like the feature, the map on that front page there, you can search by county. Everything that we've loaded online for a particular county, you can see it on that list there. If you just click on the, on the county on the map. Laura, you got a question in the chat um, from Sarah on the subject of um, that record. Mm -hmm. And she said she did a research uh, online with a question about the status of autopsy and coroner reports in Kansas being open to public record. And um, it looks like Kansas courts have said that they are available under open records law. So her question is, if one has to file a specific open records request with the county in question, or if there's a database for... Mm. Sarah, hi, that's a very tricky question for me. Um, a good one. It's a, it is a good one. Uh, Sarah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer for you right now. Uh, I would recommend please email me. My email will be at the end of the presentation. I'll see if I can sort it out for you. So, and if anyone else has the same question they would like to know, email me and I will, I will try to get out the answer. I'm sorry, I don't have it right now. All right, so this is our research room. Uh, we are open to the public, like I said, while the museum is under construction. We are open Tuesday through Friday. 9 to noon and 1 to 4. Appointments are recommended but not required. We do still limit capacity because we have a small staff. But if you would like to come in and do research, again, drop me an email at the end of the presentation, and I will get you on to come in and do research on microphone or to look through our card catalogs, which I don't think I have a slide for, but a lot of our material is still only available um, indexed through cards and not available through our online catalog. So if you're doing genealogy, make sure at some point you hit both sources. You're gonna to wanna to look for your ancestry in our cards and in our online catalog. What do you say, how can, how can we be doing card online? You'll wanna come in and look through the cards or contact our reference oh, staff. Well, into your office. You'll have to come in, yeah. yeah. And then we'll have, we have our online catalog as well that you can access from home. The things that you can access in person uh, that aren't available yet online, 
Secretary of State Corporation records if your ancestor owned a business and you wanted to learn more about it. The silver books from the Mayflower uh, Genealogy Society. We have those by kind contribution from the Mayflower Society here in Kansas. Um, if you were lucky and your ancestor uh, was in the state pen, we have <laughs> uh, we uh, we have those prisoner files all the way back to 1875. Um, there are some restrictions, obviously, going forward um, because of the, the age of it, but anything between 1875 and 1950 should be open. Uh, military records, like I said, we have way more than just bounty claims uh, and and many more. So. We are open, like I said, Tuesday to Friday and the last Saturday of the month from noon to noon. Please make an appointment at the holiday that met with the Saturday schedule. So please email me before coming in. House history checklist. I'm very sorry, we have four minutes left. I'm just going to fly through these. We have a wonderful house history checklist online at kshs.org. It will tell you all you need to know about researching property. My first suggestion is always check with the register of deeds in the location where the property is. They will probably be able to give you more information um, about the, the purchase and property itself. But we also have flat maps, Sanborn maps, um, mostly for Topeka. Sanborn maps were early insurance maps. So if someone owned a business in a town, they would have had the insurance, the Sanborn company come out and do a map of all the particular insurance issues with the house or the, the building. Uh, directories, we have many, many directories from different towns across Kansas. So, you know, those old phone books that we used to get, well, we have quite a few of those um, going way back. Uh, National and State Register of Historical Places, we have uh, our Preservation Office of the Historical Society works very closely with those. Um, again, all of this is on our website, so I'm not going to go too deeply. We also have for secondary sources, if you're looking for stories about Kansas or history about Kansas, we have our Kansas Historical Quarterly, again, available online. Use the search bar on the main page, just type in Kansas Historical Quarterly, you'll get right there. Our Kansapedia, which is just different articles about people, places, topics, things in Kansas history. It's written by volunteers and some of our staff. And then we have, of course, the Museum of History, which will hopefully open in 2024. And we always ask when you're doing research, consider what your story is and how it connects to Kansas. So, Casting a wide net. I'm going to fly through this for the last three minutes. Casting a wide net. Look at all appropriate documentation if your ancestor is connected to it. I think we have a natural or a declaration of intention to naturalize. We've got a registration card from a draft. We've got a, a list of people who were sailing on a ship. We've got passport. Um, we know there was a log that passport was issued. All of these for that burger person on the screen all come together to tell us what he was doing in 1918. And my bigger point to that is always look at the history surrounding the time in which your ancestors lived. People responded to the pressures and the trends of what was happening around them. The, the more you know about history, the easier and more fun genealogy is because you know why they may have acted in a certain way, why they may have done what they did, why would they suddenly uh, you know, get citizenship in America in you know, 1917. Or maybe they didn't want to go back to wherever they were coming from. Um, so be aware of what's going on around them historically. And some tips and tricks. Don't panic. Take notes. Cite your sources. Always cite your sources. Back up your files. Stay organized. Ask questions. Follow leads. Question everything. Talk to your family and friends. And when in doubt, my favorite, Google it. All right. We've got one minute for the questions. And yes, by our website, <laughs> KSHS reference. So that's for our reference okay. staff. And then uh, my contact information. Oh, really? So no, no church records of any kind. We do have some church records. It was impossible to cover everything in a 45 minute talk. But really, once you get in, look at the archives catalog, look at the um, the county listings for your particular county, and that will give you a better sense of all the types of records that you have. This is just, this is a very, like I said, a rudimentary overview, very high level. But if your ancestor lived in Kansas, it's a very good possibility they're going to be in a record here. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't catch your times. It was Tuesday through Friday. What time for research? Tuesday through Friday, nine to noon, one to four. We do close for lunch to give our staff a little bit of a break. And then the last Saturday of the month, except for the holiday season, uh, 19.
you use volunteers? We do. We do accept applications for volunteering. We used to have a very robust volunteer program, but this time has kind of whittled itself down. So if you would like to volunteer, we would thank you in advance. Um, please email me and we can find a the place that matches up with your interests. There's a lot of information. People walk into the reference room and they tell me, we want to do genealogy. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. No, please. I know this is a lot. This is just a very quick overview to tell you what we have, who we are. Please email me or a reference app if you have any questions. We're happy to delve into it with you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.